When we think of terrifying prehistoric predators, T-Rex usually comes to mind first. Maybe Velociraptor if you're a Jurassic Park fan, but the deadliest predator that ever lived wasn't a dinosaur at all. In fact, most people have never even heard of it, and when you learn what it was capable of, you'll understand why the oceans were basically no-go zones for millions of years. I'm talking about predators with teeth longer than your entire hand, and one particular monster that was literally the size of a school bus but moved through the water like a torpedo of death. By the end of this video, you're going to learn about five prehistoric killers that will convince you to never even try to travel back in time. And to be fair, the last one on this list is so insane that when scientists first discovered it, they thought they were looking at the bones of multiple different animals. Let's start with number five, and this one ruled the land before dinosaurs even existed. Long before saber-toothed cats roamed the earth, there was something even more terrifying stalking the ancient landscapes. Meet Innostrancevia, the largest gorgonopsid that ever lived, and it was basically a saber-toothed nightmare that weighed as much as a polar bear. This thing lived 260 million years ago, and it had canine teeth that were 6 inches long, longer than a T-Rex finger. But unlike the saber-toothed cats that came millions of years later, Innostrancevia wasn't even a mammal. It was something called a therapsid, more closely related to us than to reptiles, but still completely alien. What made an Ostrancevia so deadly wasn't just its size or those massive fangs. It was built like a killing machine, with powerful legs that could chase down prey and a skull designed to deliver bone-crushing bites. Those saber teeth weren't just for show. They were curved and serrated like steak knives, perfect for slicing through the thick hides of the armored plant eaters that lived back then. Scientists believe in Ostrancevia hunted like a combination of a modern big cat and a wolf pack. The teeth design tells us it went for the throat or soft underbelly of its prey, using those six-inch daggers to sever major blood vessels and organs. One bite from this predator and you'd bleed out in minutes. But the hunting strategy gets even more interesting. Fossil evidence suggests these creatures had extremely well-developed jaw muscles, far more powerful than you'd find on a modern lion or tiger. When an Ostrancevia clamped down on something, those jaws created enough pressure to crack thick bones. And remember, this was before the age of dinosaurs, so the prey animals back then had evolved thick, armored skin and reinforced skulls specifically to defend against predators. Inostrancevia evolved to defeat those defenses. The habitat where Inostrancevia lived was harsh and unforgiving. The climate was swinging between extreme conditions, and competition for food was fierce. This forced predators to become more efficient, more aggressive, and more adaptable. Inostrancevia succeeded because it could hunt almost anything that moved. And get this, Inostrancevia was everywhere. We found fossils in Africa, Asia, and Russia. This thing had a global distribution and was the apex predator across multiple continents. When you're the top dog on three different continents, you know you're doing something right. The really fascinating part about Inostrancevia is how it changed our understanding of prehistoric predators. For decades, scientists thought the Permian period was dominated by clumsy, slow-moving reptiles. Then we found Inostrancevia, and suddenly we realized that sophisticated hunting strategies existed millions of years before we thought possible. This creature had the body plan, the weapons, and the instincts to dominate its world in ways that wouldn't be seen again until the dinosaurs showed up tens of millions of years later. But even this saber-toothed monster couldn't compete with what was lurking in the waters. Let's dive into number four. 70 million years ago, something the size of a city bus was cruising through the oceans, and it had one of the most terrifying mouth designs in history. Mosasaurus wasn't just big, it was 60 feet of pure aquatic nightmare with flippers and an attitude problem. These things were basically giant marine lizards, like if you took a Komodo dragon and made it the size of a sperm whale. But the really nasty part was their mouth design. Mosasaurus had a second row of teeth on the roof of its mouth. So if you somehow managed to escape the first set of razor-sharp teeth, congratulations, you just got caught by the backup teeth. Prey gets grabbed by the front teeth, struggles to break free, and as it's trying to escape backward, it just gets impaled on the ceiling teeth. There's no escape route. It's a biological trap that evolution spent millions of years perfecting. It was like nature's version of a medieval torture device, except this torture device could swim at 30 miles per hour and had a brain smart enough to plan ambush attacks. We found Mosasaurus bite marks on pretty much everything from that time period. Turtles, other marine reptiles, even smaller mosasaurs. These things were so dominant that the only predator an adult mosasaurus had to worry about was a bigger mosasaurus. Paleontologists have discovered fossils showing that these creatures would actually cannibalize each other when food was scarce. 
The competition between adult Mosasaurus was so intense that they would fight to the death over territory and hunting grounds. And they weren't just mindless eating machines. Fossil evidence shows they were intelligent hunters that could unhinge their jaws like snakes to swallow massive prey whole. They had forked tongues for tracking scents underwater and could probably smell blood from miles away. The bone structure of Mosasaurus tells us something even more disturbing about how they hunted. Their spines were incredibly flexible, allowing them to twist and turn in the water with surprising agility for something so massive. They could chase down fast-moving fish, pursue fleeing sea turtles through coral reefs, and even breach the surface to snatch flying reptiles out of the air. Recent studies of Mosasaurus skulls have revealed that these predators had binocular vision, both eyes facing forward like ours. This gave them exceptional depth perception, which is rare in marine predators. Most fish have eyes on the sides of their heads to watch for danger. Mosasaurus had eyes positioned like a hunting cat because it didn't need to watch for danger. It was the danger. The fossil record also shows us that Mosasaurus had one of the strongest bites relative to body size of any marine reptile. They could generate crushing force that would pulverize bone and shell with ease. Sea turtles that had evolved shells tough enough to withstand attacks from sharks and other predators were no match for Mosasaurus. Those shells cracked like eggs. But as terrifying as Mosasaurus was, number three makes it look like a goldfish. Now we're going back to land, but this time we're talking about something that would make you never want to go camping again. Meet Sarcosuchus, also known as Super Croc, and it was exactly what it sounds like. A crocodile on steroids that grew to 40 feet long and weighed 8 tons. But wait, it gets Aww. worse. Unlike modern crocodiles that spend most of their time floating around like logs, Sarcosuchus was built for land hunting. It had long, powerful legs that could carry its massive body across dry ground at surprising speeds. When this thing decided to chase you, it was like being hunted by a school bus with teeth. The skull alone was six feet long and packed with over 100 teeth, each one designed to grab and hold struggling prey. But what made Sarcosuchus truly terrifying was its hunting strategy. It didn't just wait by the water's edge like modern crocs, this thing actively hunted on land, using its incredible sense of smell to track down prey across vast distances. The jaw mechanics of Sarcosuchus were absolutely brutal. Modern crocodiles have the strongest bite force of any living animal, but Sarcosuchus took that to another level entirely. The muscle attachment points on the skull show that this creature could snap its jaws shut with enough force to shatter dinosaur bones. When it grabbed something, that something wasn't getting away and it lived alongside the dinosaurs, which means even T-Rex had to watch out for this monster. We've actually found evidence that Sarcosuchus preyed on dinosaurs, including some pretty large ones. When you're big enough to make a T-Rex nervous, you know you're in a league of your own. Sarcosuchus kept growing its entire life. The biggest specimens we've found were probably 50 plus years old and still getting bigger when they died. There might have been even larger ones out there that we just haven't found yet. The environment where Sarcosuchus lived was a prehistoric paradise compared to today's deserts. This was ancient Africa, but it was covered in lush river systems, swamps, and forests. Sarcosuchus ruled these waterways like an aquatic emperor, but it also ventured onto land to hunt and establish territory. What's really interesting is that Sarcosuchus had a unique bulbous chamber on the end of its snout, similar to what we see in gharials today. Scientists aren't completely sure what this was for, but the leading theories suggest it might have been used for vocalization, making loud, booming sounds to communicate with other Sarcosuchus or worn-off rivals. Imagine hearing that sound echoing across a prehistoric swamp at night. The teeth of Sarcosuchus tell us another important detail about its diet. Unlike modern crocodiles that have all their teeth roughly the same shape, Sarcosuchus had different types of teeth for different jobs. Some were designed for gripping, others for cutting, and some for crushing. This dental diversity meant Sarcosuchus could eat almost anything. Fish, dinosaurs, other crocodiles, you name it. But even this land-based nightmare can't compete with number two on our list. The shark that made Megalodon look small. You know Megalodon, right? The giant shark that's been in about a thousand movies? Well, there was something swimming around 160 million years ago that makes Megalodon look like a minnow. Meet Liopleurodon, and it had a skull nearly 7 feet long with teeth that were 18 inches long, twice the length of T. rex teeth. Some early estimates suggested this thing could grow over 80 feet long and weigh 150 tons. Even the conservative estimates put Liopleurodon at 50 feet long, which is still bigger than most whales swimming around today, except this whale had teeth designed to crush through anything. But the really insane part? We found bite marks on a 50-foot Liopleurodon fossil that suggests something even bigger attacked it. Something bigger than a 50-foot apex predator was hunting it. 
The oceans back then were basically a nightmare where the biggest, scariest thing you could imagine was still somebody else's lunch. Leopluridon wasn't just massive, it was fast. This wasn't some slow, lumbering giant floating around waiting for food to swim by. It was built for speed with powerful flippers that could launch it through the water like a missile. When something the size of a blue whale can move like a dolphin and wants to eat you, there's nowhere to hide. The flipper structure on Liopluridon was unlike anything we see in modern marine animals. Each flipper was powered by massive muscle groups that could generate tremendous thrust. Studies of the flipper mechanics suggest Liopluridon could accelerate rapidly from a standstill, reaching attack speeds in just seconds. This burst speed capability made it a devastating ambush predator. And those teeth weren't just long, they were curved and razor sharp on both edges. When Liopluridon bit down on something, those teeth would slide through flesh and bone like hot knives through butter. Scientists who handled the fossils actually cut themselves on teeth that were 150 million years old. They were still that sharp. The skull structure reveals something else fascinating about Liopluridon. It had massive eye sockets that held eyes the size of dinner plates. In the murky depths where it hunted, these enormous eyes collected every bit of available light, giving Liopluridon superior vision in conditions where most predators would be effectively blind. It could see you coming from hundreds of feet away, but in that dark water you'd never see it until those jaws were already closing. Liopluridon also had an extremely sophisticated sense of smell. The nasal passages in the skull are proportionally huge, suggesting it could detect tiny traces of blood or other biological markers from miles away. Once it caught your scent, you were already on the menu. There was no outrunning something that could track you through an entire ocean. The hunting territories of these creatures must have been absolutely massive. A predator that large, with that kind of energy requirement, would need to patrol hundreds of square miles of ocean just to find enough food to survive. And when multiple Leopluridon shared the same waters, the competition would have been fierce and violent. But believe it or not, even this ocean monster doesn't take the top spot because the deadliest predator that ever lived was something so perfectly designed for killing that it makes everything else on this list look tame. The deadliest predator that ever lived was Megalodon, but not for the reasons you might think. Yes, it was massive, up to 60 feet long and weighing 50 tons. Yes, it had jaws that could crush a small car, but what made it truly the ultimate killer was something much more terrifying than size. Megalodon babies were already the size of adult great white sharks when they were born because these shark pups practiced cannibalism in the womb. They would eat their unhatched siblings and unfertilized eggs while they were still developing. Only the biggest, most aggressive babies survived to be born, and they came out ready to hunt. A newborn megalodon was already six feet long and had been practicing killing since before it could see sunlight. That's like if human babies were born already knowing how to fight and weighing 200 pounds. From the moment they entered the ocean, these sharks were already formidable predators capable of taking down large prey. But the really terrifying part was their bite force. Megalodon could bite down with 182,000 newtons of force. T-Rex could only manage about 57,000 newtons. Megalodon's bite was more than three times stronger than the most powerful land predator that ever lived. We found whale bones with Megalodon bite marks that looked like someone took a chainsaw to them. These sharks could bite through whale vertebrae like they were breadsticks. And they were smart hunters too, attacking whales from below and targeting their hearts and lungs for quick kills. The hunting strategy of Megalodon was refined over millions of years of evolution. They would patrol migration routes where whales traveled, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. When they attacked, it was with surgical precision. One massive bite to disable the prey, then they'd circle back to finish the job. This wasn't random violence. It was calculated hunting that maximized energy efficiency. Megalodon teeth were constantly replaced throughout their lives. When one tooth broke or fell out, another would rotate forward from the rows behind it to take its place. A single megalodon could go through 20,000 teeth in its lifetime. Each tooth was serrated like a steak knife, designed to saw through flesh and bone with minimal effort. The distribution of megalodon fossils tells us something amazing about their range and adaptability. These sharks weren't confined to one region or one type of water temperature. They thrived in tropical waters, temperate zones, and even ventured into cooler regions when prey was abundant. This adaptability meant there was virtually nowhere safe from them in the world's oceans. But what made Megalodon truly unstoppable was its global dominance. These things ruled every ocean on Earth for over 10 million years. They were found everywhere except Antarctica, and they were the undisputed apex predators of their time. For 10 million years, nothing challenged them. 
They were so successful as a species that they barely evolved during that entire time because they were already perfect killing machines. The social structure of Megalodon is still debated by scientists, but evidence suggests they were primarily solitary hunters. Unlike modern great whites that sometimes hunt in loose aggregations, adult Megalodon probably maintained vast territories and only came together during mating season. The competition for food would have been too intense for them to coexist in the same waters regularly. Recent analysis of Megalodon vertebrae has revealed something disturbing about their metabolism. These sharks had metabolic rates similar to modern warm-blooded mammals, which meant they could maintain high activity levels and process energy incredibly efficiently. A warm-blooded shark the size of a bus with the bite force to crush cars, evolution had created something truly unstoppable. And the goofiest part is that we're still finding new fossils that suggest these ocean monsters were even bigger and more terrifying than we originally thought. Every new discovery makes us realize that the prehistoric oceans were basically alien worlds filled with creatures that shouldn't be able to exist.